We first reported this story over on our Instagram, where we're massively improving our output thanks to our new social media coordinator. Be sure to follow us across our socials for updates every day. All of those are linked below. So on Friday, the SNP and Scottish Greens announced that they'd agreed to a cooperation deal. And this is a big deal. So let's discuss what the cooperation means, if it makes independence more likely, and what's going to happen next. This whole deal has been in the works for a while now, and there were actually reports of it way back in May. While it won't be formalised until Saturday, when the SNP have their National Executive Committee and the Greens have a membership meeting, the draft agreement was published on Friday, and it's pretty safe to assume that it will be signed off in its current form. According to the draft, the agreement is about dealing with the crises in our climate and our natural world, our recovery from the Covid pandemic, the building of a more equal and inclusive society, and accelerating Scotland's journey towards democratic renewal and independence in Europe. The agreement is based on mutual trust and good faith between the two parties, who both agree that Scotland should be characterised by fairness and equality for all, and importantly, who both think that Scotland should be an independent nation in its own right. The agreement also says that the Scottish Greens will get two ministerial positions in the Scottish Government, the UK's first ever Green Ministers, and they'll get influence over policy in exchange for their support in confidence and supply motions. The agreement also mentions something called the Working Together to Build a Greener, Fairer, Independent Scotland programme, which has been published alongside the agreement. This is basically the SNP and Greens shared policy programme, and it's got six core sections. The first is about Scottish independence, and it basically says what you'd expect. Both the Scottish Greens and SNPs are pro-independence, and they've both agreed that another referendum should be held in the first half of this parliamentary session, i.e. before 2023, or at the very latest before the next parliamentary session in 2025. According to the agreement, an independent Scotland would then ideally rejoin the EU, although there are a little light on the details here. The next section is about the climate emergency, and it basically says that the Scottish Government will accelerate the decarbonisation of our energy system, although the programme also admits that the SNP and Greens don't entirely agree on the role of the oil and gas sector. This is because the SNP are a bit keener on using North Sea oil reserves to guarantee the future prosperity of an independent Scotland, whereas the Greens are a pretty hard no when it comes to oil. The third section is about the post-Covid recovery, and there are some pretty interesting policies in here. Mandated living wage for all public sector grants, annual public net zero plans for big businesses, carbon commitments for any business applying for public sector funding, and a circular economy bill this Parliament. These are the kind of things you would expect from centre-left politicians, using the Covid crisis to create what they view as a more sustainable and fair economy. The fourth section is about, quote, a fairer Scotland, and this is mostly about improving housing availability, in part with help of rent controls and reducing child poverty by improving child benefits. They also want to reform the Gender Recognition Act and make it more trans-friendly by simplifying the process by which a trans person can obtain legal recognition as well as banning conversion therapy in Scotland. The fifth section is about improving public services. They want to improve Scotland's education system by recruiting at least 3,500 additional teachers and 500 classroom assistants, as well as establishing a national care service to improve social care, and improving mental health by doubling the budget for community-based mental health wellbeing services to children and young people to £30 million. Under the environmental policy, the Scottish Government wants to prevent any further wildlife extinctions and declines by 2030, create a new national park, and increase annual woodland creation targets to 18,000 hectares per year by 2025. So that's what's in the shared programme. The draft agreement says that while the shared programme might be subject to change, the Greens will be consulted on any change, and the SNP will commit to acting in good faith 
with any consultations. The final thing worth saying is that the draft agreement also excludes some areas. Basically, the SNP and the Greens agree to disagree on a whole load of things, including GDP, which the Green Party consider an inappropriate metric of growth, private schools, which the Greens want abolished, and NATO membership, which the Greens reject too. This list isn't exhaustive either, and if something else pops up that they don't agree on, then it will have to be added to the list. It will be interesting to see whether this walling off of controversial topics actually works, whether the Greens and the SMPs can be besties when it comes to independence, while simultaneously getting at each other's throats when it comes to North Sea oil. So that's what's in the agreement, but what does it actually mean for Scottish politics? Well, firstly, it means that there's now a combined majority in the Scottish Parliament with that new majority backing independence, which makes it increasingly difficult for Westminster to resist, making it more likely than ever that together they could push the country towards another independence vote. But it also demonstrates how mainstream Green parties have become, not just in Scotland, but in the UK and Europe more generally. Once considered relatively obscure, Green parties are now pushing for government positions in places like Germany and Scotland, and the Green Party's policies are rapidly being co-opted by mainstream centre-left parties. Let us know what you think of the deal though, the Greens and Scotland's future, in the comments below. Also, be sure to vote in the poll on our Twitter about this topic, and remember to follow us across all of our socials while you're there. Thanks for your support. Also, while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.